Hey, so uh, thank you for being here. This is my first KubeCon. Um, I've been to several amazing talks where the speaker said that uh, it was their first time speaking in public after COVID. This is my first time in speaking in public uh, period. So let's see how this goes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to the CNCF. Um, you clearly don't know what you're doing. <laughs> um, so a bit about me. Well, uh, we are going to uh, see how you can explore the layers of your container images uh, to find some sneaky vulnerabilities. And previously, we'll go through some more common mitigations. Um, very quickly about me, I'm Pablo. I'm a software engineer at VMware. I joined uh, like uh, one year ago. I started working on containers and Helm charts. And now I'm more on the uh, Java microservices world. Uh, well, by the way, I, I've also studied law before computer engineering. So if someone has a problem here in Spain, talk to me. Uh, the story behind this talk um, was in November of last year when I moved from the team maintaining the Bitnami open source catalog. Uh, for those that uh, don't know, Bitnami offers a huge library of containers and help charts uh, built, tested, and published by an internal pipeline. I'm now part of the team that's developing the product that will supersede this internal pipeline and offer many of its features as a service. So in this new team, I was tasked uh, to establish a vulnerability baseline for the Java microservices under development. We needed a way to tell if uh, under a new circumstance we were worsening our security posture. And um, a baseline is what allows you to to make that judgment. So we had a very good starting point, uh, almost a, a lab environment. Uh, we had very, a very limited number of microservices built with up-to-date technologies. Uh, most of them uh, used build packs. Uh, but uh, as you may know, build packs uh, require your app to fit into a set of requirements. And when that can happen, the classic Dockerfile approach uh, is unavoidable. So we also had already in place a vulnerability scanning phase in CI running Aqua Strivi, but it was just uh, informative and non-blocking. All of that to achieve a sound goal to have no, criti no fixable critical vulnerabilities in production. Um, why do I think this entry-level talk uh, might be relevant? Because uh, as you know, containers are uh, an excellent tool to ease the um, deployment and to ease deployment and development. But they also bring their unique challenges when it comes to securing them to people that never had before a, sim a similar responsibility. If uh, you are working on a team that's uh, similar to mine, developers are now responsible for the. Uh, patch management of the OS base image. And also this shift happened uh, while containers are marketed as boxes that just work. So why would you even want to look into them, right? Um, finally, many of the open source vulnerability scanning tools are noisy by default, have noisy outputs by default, and require some tweaking to give you the useful information. Uh, on what you can uh, act, uh, act. So I'm going to go through the steps of fixing the vulnerabilities in a Java Spring Boot Maven project uh, to show that uh, that's a task that uh, can be um, done by anyone uh, with a minimum knowledge of containers. And even going one extra mile is not that difficult once you remove part of the of the magic of containers. So let's go quickly removing that magic. So containers, as you know, uh, container images are sets of layers 
we'll see in a bit uh, what are those layers. And uh, you may remember that uh, there was this common phrase of uh, every instruction in a Docker file generates a new layer. But uh, with Bilkit, that's no longer true. Um, now, um, the layers are cached, and if no changes are detected, uh, the cache layer is used, so uh, effectively only run, copy, and add instructions create a new layer in your image. Um, if you run a Docker build with this simple image, uh, with this simple Docker file, sorry, uh, you'll see that the, uh, really the only layers that are created are the ones that are hi highlighted, highlighted here, and the other ones are just skipped. Uh, layers are just folders and configuration files. Uh, if you run that command, uh, you'll see uh, uh, an output similar to this. I've highlighted in green, yellow, and orange the layers from this Docker file, and you find in one the mini dev uh, file structure. Mini dev is just um, and a stripped down version of Debian maintained by Vietnami. On the other, the uh, empty file. And on the last one, the uh, curl binary with the CA certificates uh, unpacked. So I've set up a playground for this talk that uh, are two Java projects simulating a plugin system and a container library that, uh, in this case, just holds the um, image for uh, building the demo service. Okay, so let's see live. Okay, I hope everyone in the back can see this is a strange layout. So um, the builder image, um, the demo service uses uh, multi-stage builds. Um, multi-stage builds uh, help us um, implement the builder pattern in which we uh, separate, well, in which we divide the process of bringing source code to production into two images. The first image with uh, all the uh, build chain tools and the other one just uh, holds the binary generated or the bytecode uh, to have a, a slimmer image. Uh, so here we'll just uh, run a Docker build and call it local maven uh, column maven and so on. So in the uh, demo service, this is uh, one of the, the, the skeleton of one the, of the microservices that I had to look into. I kept the original structure, but no code. So I have the API, core, infra, some ports and adapters pattern. Uh, and in the boot module, the boot module is the one that holds uh, it acts as a glue of the project because uh, has the, has a dependency on all the other modules uh, and also the the application entry point. So in in here is where we are using the um, Docker file Maven plugin to create the image of the app and the uh, configuration settings are very simple. Uh, the repository is going to be the artifact ID, the tag is going to be the version of the project, and then as build arcs, uh, we are sending the jar and some other environment variables. So if you are curious, the, this is the Docker file. Here we have the builder image, some magic to install Helm, and here the real image that it's going to be deployed. So uh, we we'll use the Maven rubber and the typical clean install command. And hopefully the network is going to be OK. OK, so while this is building, we can go now 
uh, to the process of refining the 3B output, um, we'll start by running a naive 3B image and use yeah and use the image generated here. Sorry for those in the back because this is not going to be seen very well. Um, but trust me, uh, nothing to worry about, just 200 vulnerabilities in a container image. <laughs> so this is uh, not, not the output that we want because we want just the critical ones. So for that, Trivi has a flag that we can use called uh, severity. So we can do dash dash severity and set it to critical. And if you notice, Trivi, uh, the, the output of Trivi was now instantaneous because Trivi uh, cached the result from the previous run. So um, this is nicer, but we still have here uh, some vulnerabilities that uh, are not relevant because if they, if a package uh, doesn't have a fixed version, we are not going to go to uh, uh, to develop the fix for that package uh, in the upstream Debian. So, uh, Trivi has this nice flag called ignore and fixed that will give us the uh, actionable items that we need. So with this, with this we are good to go. Um, if you are okay with it, I'm going to start by, uh, with the um, base image vulnerabilities. This is an OpenSSL critical vulnerability. We will have to go here, and I have bad news. Um, I think the only way to, to know in which image um, this vulnerability is resolved is just manual, manually checking if a new revision of the base image or if a newer uh, version uh, doesn't have this vulnerability. So hopefully. Uh, running again, uh, install will generate an image that doesn't have this vulnerability. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, yeah. So now Trivi is detecting that this is a different image from before, so it's going to take uh, just a little bit. Yeah. This is done. So uh, we can go now with this uh, very odd runtime dependency. This, this was Helm was one of the reasons why we couldn't use build packs for for this uh, service, among with other more rare uh, runtime dependencies. Again, uh, more bad news. Uh, to know in which version of Helm um, this, one, this uh, version of Containerd is bumped, I had to go to the uh, Helm repo, search in the issues and see uh, in which pull request the, they bumped the, the Containerd version. So again, I know for a fact that in the 381 version of Helm, this, vulnerab this vulnerability uh, was mitigated. So with that rebuilding, we can see if that's really out. I can't believe everything's working. <laughs> okay, Trivi again is going to take a bit. And we are left just with the uh, app vulnerabilities. Um, it's debatable if uh, mitigating the, uh, the compile time vulnerabilities um, 
well, if scanning at the container image level for compile time vulnerabilities is the most efficient way, uh, Trivi, in fact, uh, has another option that's not image, that's file system, that will uh, look into the pom.xml instead of the jars. But if you ask me, this is just a, a good last mile verification. So somebody may know which CV is this, is the Spring 4 Shell RCE. And uh, fortunately, uh, we have this very well organized and in in the original service we had only to uh, we only had to bump this maven property so we could bring the the latest uh, spring boot version uh, you may have noticed that uh, i'm using java 16 because that's the version that we had in november uh, that's deprecated and uh, Mm, we now use uh, Java, Java 17. So, okay. So now we should be, we should have uh, get rid of uh, Spring for Shell. And the one that's left is uh, this Xstream library. So if you know Maven, um, if we are using this X stream in our project. We, we'll, we could just uh, look for it, but uh, we, may, we may be bringing it through a Spring. So Maven has this uh, plugin called the dependency plugin uh, with, a, with the goal called tree. And we can see if uh, X stream is here. And it's not. Again, if you are, uh, if you ever worked, if you ever had the fortune of or disgrace of working with Maven, you also know the uh, pl the help plugin and the uh, effective POM goal that's going to merge all the different POMs of your build, and that's what uh, Maven effectively uses to to run the build. So. If that's not here, if, that not, if that not, that's not here, we can know for sure that in this project, this Xstream library is not, uh, because maybe it's our uh, source of truth. But in some place of the container image, there's this Xstream jar, because Trivi is flagging it. So uh, what we can do, with Trivi is instead of using the table format that just prints the most important bits of information, there's an extra flag that we can use to unleash all the information that Trivi uh, collects. So with this JSON flag, I'm going to zoom a bit. Yeah, with this JSON flag, we can find here this Xstream library, and it says that we are bringing it uh, from the hello plugin that's in the plugins uh, folder. So with this information, we can go here, look at the Docker file, slash plugins, probably it's going to be in here. And we are bringing something from the builder image to this second one. Uh, by looking at the name of the folders, we can be pretty sure from which of these uh, instructions we are bringing that hello, hello plugin. But trust me, the original Docker file wasn't so simple. So we can be sure by doing something like uh, what we did what of what we did in in the previous slides uh, something like a uh, docker save to a tar pack package and then uh, looking into into the, the the contents for 
uh, this hash, this one, the, the one that starts with 4ABA. But there's a, there's a more convenient way by using dive. So dive is a layer explorer tool that will give us a ton of inf information about our image. So probably, yeah, I have to zoom out a bit. Sorry for those in the back. Yeah. So that's a lot of information and, well, I love it, but if you, maybe you can read it. In the right it says current layer um, contents. Um, I usually toggle the unmodified because uh, having all the uh, files from the base image uh, clutters uh, the screen a bit, and this way we can have we can see only the the files added or the files that have been modified. So in the left we have the layer explorer, the layer details of the one selected, and the general image details. If uh, someone here has good eyes, uh, here we are. Uh, leaking build-time secrets because we are using um, the arc instruction in a way that's not meant to be used. Uh, arcs are just uh, to be used for um, environment variables that you want available at build-time but not at runtime. But we came here for another thing we came here for uh, knowing in which of the layers we are bringing this hello plugin. And obviously, in the 120 bytes layer should be. So we are now sure that it is in this line of the Docker file that we are bringing the plugin with vulnerabilities. So we can go and be sure here, yeah, here it is. So basically what what I had to do in real life is uh, call the maintainers of the plugin, They've, they bump the extreme vulnerability and then in the demo service we'll have to use a newer version so Trivi doesn't flag it. So, uh, conclusions of this talk, uh, you shouldn't be afraid of going one extra mile seeing the contents of your images because they are just files and folders. Many vulnerability scanning tools need some fine tuning to provide a useful output and uh, as you saw, mitigating the reported vulnerabilities is very often a, an easy task. You just have to tune the scan set sensible expectations and get the job done. So, thank you, gracias. <laughs> if you have any questions, uh, there's a mic in the center of the room. Uh, I have a question. Do you have Trivi implemented in your pipeline? Uh, yeah, we we had um, uh, a step in CI that just used the Trivi CLI. Yeah. Hi, and thanks for your talk. Um, Thank you. Is there a reason why you had the Helm uh, binary in the final layer of the Docker image? Because usually, I think you don't need it at mm. all. Yeah, that uh, was um, at tactical, uh, temporal thing. We are now, we, are, we now move that from the orchestrator service and we had it in the, uh, just in the execution. I know how to explain it. Um, 
but yeah, it, it was uh, a temporal thing. Now, okay. now this um, uh, orchestrator service uses spill packs. It's just sending the um, what we want to execute to a Tecton cluster, and in there, it's where we have uh, Helm and the other uh, runtime dependencies. Thank you. Hi. Uh, Hi. This might be a bit off topic. Uh, I was just wondering, why do you use Debian images as your base? Yeah, uh, that that was also temporal. Uh, we, um, yeah, I should have asked why to the developers. Uh, they used this slim version of Debian, but it, for me, it was strange also that they used the the Open JDK instead of the GRE. So. I don't know, uh, I don't have an answer, a clear answer for that. If I had to guess, it's probably for size, using mm -hmm. the Debian Slim Pack. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. Uh, we make use of a lot of the Bitnami containers, and uh, I'm responsible for fixing the vulnerabilities. Uh, mm -hmm. And the way I deal with 99% of them is I replace the base image with Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you.